Hey everyone, uh, FG doing um, selfie mode here, uh, holding on to the phone here at arm's length. Not the best, but you know, this is how it goes. So how's everybody doing today? It's day three. Uh, it's now Sunday. Uh, the weather really isn't any better. It's somewhat warm, but uh, if you take a look here and see, the sky is really not any better. We're hoping for some more sunshine to come back soon. But anyway, we're going to look at uh, phase, what, two and a half, I guess, uh, of the radio install, which is nearing completion, and I'll show you what's happening with that. As I was saying, the install itself doesn't look like it came out too bad overall. See what the next parts of the project are. I still do not have the microphone actually mounted to figure out where that's going to go. Uh, obviously, it needs to be somewhere within reach that... Uh, is easily accessible. Uh, this particular microphone actually has a backlit keypad on it, which is very nice. You can directly enter frequencies on either side of the radio. It's a quad band dual receiver, so you can actually have two different channels active at the same time, and you can simply switch back and forth by determining which one is main, or just by turning the volume knobs up and down, as it actually has two independent knobs. So it's basically two radios inside of one chassis. It's a pretty nice feature and I'm gonna let everybody know in a later broadcast uh, how the reception seems to be. Uh, I was able to pick up a couple of bands. Uh, I'm finishing my license although I don't know how that's going to go because I'm not even sure if the ham testing centers are open right now. Not sure how that's going to go. I've taken multiple online tests for the ham preparation for testing phase and I've passed most of those and a few that I failed I only failed by a few points I'm gonna go back and review some more of the material and retake the test uh, the question is that uh, are any of the testing centers actually open these days that's going to be the big question with everything else so disturbed we're not really sure what's going on or exactly where we'll find out how that works out so currently I'm not able to legally transmit but there is no prohibition on receiving any signals, so I've been monitoring the local National Guard and air uh, bands, which are also um, bands that this radio can receive, which is a very nice feature. And I found online a list of all the frequencies that they're using, so I can directly key those in and place those into one of the eight presets that the radio holds. It actually, it has 800, but it has eight super fast presets, and then 800 more which are general presets which is a very nice feature as well so I'll give people updates on how that's going and the other thing that I haven't done yet actually is to mount the speaker all right so here's an interior shot uh, as we were looking at before if you take a look now at the kick panel and the floor it uh, certainly looks a lot different than it did in the last shot which with the magic of digital technology only appears to be seconds apart but is actually in reality a whole day here's the kick panel and the area on the floor and you can see that the wiring is mostly cleaned up uh, I still have a cable over here coming through right now I'm just running on a 12 volt adapter with binding posts I haven't exactly figured out what I'm gonna do with that yet whether this is going to just be a cigarette lighter plug so I can power and unpower the radio as desired or whether I'm going to hardwire it directly into the on-off relay system that turns with the key to active or deactivated. Back over here again Go back to where the radio was mounted as you saw before take a look at how that came out and I had a chance to drive the truck yesterday and it did go pretty well. Uh, there is a little bit of bounce in the mount as I had anticipated. And it does seem like it has a tendency to move around a little bit from side to side. So that might be something I need to address. We'll see how that goes. So here, if you recall, is the speaker that I rewired in another video, which I will be posting very soon. 
Uh, obviously, as you can see, this is not hard mounted yet. It just has a very long cable with a 1 8 inch monophonic plug that fits to the back of the radio. Uh, the chassis, of course, being under the seat, as was detailed in an earlier video. And, uh, oh yeah, here you can see the box of leftover parts as well. Uh, some of these are items that came with the radio as the kit, and some of them are just things that I pulled out of my build box as well. Uh, this is uh, actually a pretty decent uh, speaker. I believe it's about a 4-inch in diameter. Uh, it does not have a tweeter or anything of that nature. It's a single polycone. The sound performance is really not that bad. I had a chance to test it out, and even on transmissions that were not of the greatest quality, the audio legibility uh, was actually pretty decent. So I'm hoping that this is going to be a good addition, uh, as it was noted by many people that the interior speaker, which is provided uh, in the uh, chassis by Yasu, is not a great quality and can be garbled, especially at higher volumes. One thing that was noted by other users is the volume controls, uh, being as I said, this is a double channel, has volume controls both sides. Both of those can be a little sensitive, uh, so I may end up adding a resistor bridge inside this Kenwood box to bring down the actual audio output to make the volume controls a little less sensitive by doing so. I don't believe there are any settings in the menu itself to do that. That is something that I'm going to take a look through. If I recall correctly, the menu manual for this machine is about 64 pages long, so there are a lot of options that are buried in there that I could go ahead and address and see how all of those programming parameters go, although I don't believe that audio was one of them. That concludes part two, and we will catch you again soon.